So okay guys, today's video is going to be on a program called Joy to Key. This is shareware, so you do have to pay for some of the advanced features there are in this program. However, there are freeware versions of this program from what I remember, so I'll try to link it down below in the description if I find the links. But yeah, with that said, a friend of mine wondered how I would program all these button boxes. Do I just reprogram them independently whenever I want to do a specific game? Well, the answer is no. I pre-program them to think like they're game pads, and I use a piece of software called Joy to Key. And with this program, essentially, it converts gamepad inputs, so any kind of controller that shows up under the control panel and gamepad on Windows will work. So essentially, you can use Xbox 360 controllers on PC games that may not even support the game just by making your computer think that this is a keyboard. Anyway, it's a pretty cool program. It's not like a USB rubber ducky or anything, so don't expect it to do a ton of um, commands in a row when you push a button. However, you do have some basic features and things that you guys might um, take advantage of in certain games if you were to use them. They do have auto-repeating uh, button options, so when you click a button, it will repeat a function until you click the button again, which is kind of cool. They also do short um, button combinations, as you guys can see. There's a you can press control shift and an arrow or something, but you're not going to be able to type out full long strings of text with just one button push like a USB ducky could. Anyway, the reason why I use this program instead of um, just reprogramming these things on the fly is it's just a lot easier. I can just use this, control my desktop at a push of a button like so. I can click a profile here and now it's set up for streaming. So if I were to push one of these while OBS was running right now, it would probably turn my uh, recording off or make the video less full screen or something. I have different inputs set up, so I'm not gonna push anything while it's on that profile. So let's go back to profile one. But yeah, as you can see, you can have multiple joysticks too. So if I wanted this to act like a keyboard and mouse, I can also make this act like a keyboard and mouse at the same time. So you can have more than one gamepad plugged in, which is nice. Just to show you guys that this is indeed set up to work like a gamepad, I've opened up my game controller options under control panel. As you can see, if I push a button here, well, you get the idea. If, let me click into Joy to Key. It will actually push the input. As you can see, if button 4 was pushed, and it will actually tell you where it was pushed over here to button 4. Now this program does also take advantage of the stick, so if your controller has a stick, you can make it do functions as well. Anyway, this isn't about Joy to Key, but I do want to point it out, since some of you guys may be wondering here, why are these buttons yellow in the program? Well, that's just because I left floating points on this Arduino when I rushed and put it together, so it thinks it's constantly going left and up. So if I were to run this and set this up in a game, it'd, pro it'd probably constantly go in that specific direction unless I unmap it, which kind of sucks. However, thanks to Joy to Key, I can just set those two functions to disabled and they won't do a thing. Anyway, other than that, there are a few things I've never actually used in this program. You can save profiles and things and reload them in if you wish to change buttons on the fly like a madman. You can have like eight profiles here, save it, delete everything, and just start fresh and then reload the old one back in if you so desire. Now since I don't use a joystick mostly with this program, I can't really tell you how good it is with emulating joystick movement to keyboard movement. But there are a ton of options for it, so I thought we could click in here and look at them. As you can see, there's a threshold, so you can actually set the threshold uh, to be really sensitive or really not. What this means is if you got a joystick, here I'm going to put this on screen, and then just hit something. If I were to push up on this and set this key to be W, you can make it have a threshold, so the higher the input or the higher I push up on here, the more the W key gets pressed down. So that's kind of useful. If you want to use a controller in a game that the game doesn't support gamepad inputs, this would be the way to do it. Now there are some um, other things you can set up in this program, such as sounds when you change profiles. So you know if you change the profile when you push the button. There's also um, settings in here that allow you to completely minimize the program to your tray, which is kind of nice if you want to just have it out of the way while you're streaming. That makes it really handy. But other than that, I can't really think of anything else to talk about with this program. It's just a program I really liked and I thought it might be worthwhile making a video on because there ain't a lot of programs out there that allow you to do anything like this program can.
Well, anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to talk about this program a bit and get its name out there because there ain't a lot of programs like this on Windows that do a good job of emulating um, gamepads to uh, hid based hardware. And I just thought this did a good job at it, and I thought it was very well worth the money. So, yeah, with that said, I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. And they kind of arrive like this. There ain't really much of an unboxing. You get a skate and a wrapper, you get another skate and a wrapper. Here you want to navigate to add-ons, then hit install add-on from file.